Switching gears tonight, we continue our only on Fox look at an unprecedented meeting. A longtime local crime victims advocate with one of the nation's most infamous serial killers sitting face to face. And Fox 26's Randy Wallace joining us live from Southwest Houston with more of this exclusive conversation. Randy. Caitlin, son of Sam Killer David Berkowitz is a good example of a model prisoner. But most people say he should never be paroled. I want Stacy's killer. The son of Sam. The son of Sam. David Berkowitz. The son of Sam. David Berkowitz. The son of Sam. At the age of 23, David Richard Berkowitz spent a year terrorizing New York City. From July 1976 through July 1977, he killed six people and wounded seven others. He gained worldwide notoriety by not only eluding police, but mocking them by leaving letters about his deadly crime spree. He's been in prison now for 44 years. I'm a pretty hardball as you can get. I mean, I've been to eight executions with victims' families. So there's no, there's no wavering on where I stand on the issue of punishment. Andy Kahn with Crime Stoppers would be the first to admit serial killer David Berkowitz was a huge ally in his fight against murderabilia, an industry where high profile killers like Berkowitz and others could make big bucks off of headline grabbing crimes. People are fascinated by the certain kinds of crimes and or oh, they want souvenirs and things like that. That's part of our culture. And David Berkowitz is a household name. You're not going to have serial killers like David Berkowitz. You're not going to have catchy nicknames like the Son of Sam anymore. They're a dying breed. And so many people um, don't make it that long in prison. And if they do, they're not functioning to the same capacity that he has. Berkowitz began his 40 plus years in prison at Attica, one of the most notorious prisons in the country. One of the things that was most interesting to me was to see his giant scar that he has right here on his neck from an altercation he had at Attica. Another inmate wanted to make a name for himself by killing Berkowitz. I was very fortunate, very fortunate. He, he missed my granite artery by just a hair's breadth. And had he struck that, I would have, would be here today. I think that he's found a way to thrive in a very controlled environment. Berkowitz recalled when another inmate said to him, God loves you. Listen, there's, there's, there's no way to God loves someone like me. I've done too much evil. I've done too many bad things. I doubt if God will ever want to forgive me or even want to have anything to do with me. Berkowitz says he's turned his life over to God. I'm sorry I hurt my parents. I'm sorry I hurt innocent people. I regret it with all my heart. And I just poured my heart out to him. Now he's an elder in the prison's church. And I also work as a mobility assistant, which means I'm, you know, handicapped guys that need assistance getting around. I work in the unit with them. And so that's really, um, I get a lot of joy out of that, a lot of satisfaction. Khan and Sidney Zyker, also with Crime Stoppers, recorded their meeting with Berkowitz for their Balanced Voice podcast. We can yell and scream all we want, but isn't he doing something you want inmates to do? Remorseful, repent, give something back to society. Even though he's serving six consecutive life sentences, Berkowitz still periodically comes up for parole. In the past, he's told New York parole officials he's not interested. He's up for parole again next year. Berkowitz seems to be torn, even over the remote possibility of being free. Of course, I think he should stay there, but I am also think that he's kind of a success story. Be sure to watch the Balanced Voice podcast produced by Crime Stoppers with Berkowitz. We've got links for you on our website. Jonathan, Caitlin. Randy, you have covered a lot of crime. You've interviewed a lot of criminals. You've interviewed Andy Kahn a few times. A lot of this is weird to see them talking. What was the biggest standout to you as you looked at all this and put this all together? Well, here, you know, I've done a lot of prison inmate interviews. I did one just last week, and they're behind glass. You know, there's no, there's no like direct where you can touch each other. And I just almost cracked up when. Uh, Berkowitz just kind of reaches over 
and touches Andy Kahn. I mean, it was they were in a very intimate setting for a prison interview. Yeah, that kind of access just so rare. Well, Randy, if anybody missed the first part of your story, we have that also on our website, fox26houston.com. Randy Wallace, live tonight. Thank you.